A big shout out to Joby Valves and Laurent Solar for helping me with this project. This has been a monumental undertaking, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. There's a lot of education to be had here. I'll post links to all the critters that I'm using in this video. This is an off-grid water system here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. The sun is setting and we're not gonna get a lot of work done today, but we're gonna get some work done. Today we are gonna show you guys how to build a tire water tank. We're gonna walk you around the tire. We're gonna show you exactly everything that I do to build out this tire water tank. And this thing's gonna hold somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 400 gallons. I think the best thing for us to do is jump right in. We're gonna show you the footage that I got about two weeks ago when I had my friend Stephen here helping me. He is from Australia slash London. <laughs> He's from all over. So first thing we're going to show you is how we cut out the top of the tire water tank and then we're going to show you all the plumbing that goes into this.
Folks, I hope you enjoyed that little segment right there. That was pretty fun. This is the tank, and I've actually got to take this tank down to my garage. I'm gonna take it down on the pallet forks and rinse it out, scrub it out real good with soapy water. Uh, what we have are several thought processes at work here. So we have to be able to drain this tank. And the way we're gonna build this is we're gonna put rock dust or screenings down right here. We're gonna tamp all this stuff down and we're gonna lay the tank over in there. There are gonna be two plumbing fixtures that come up into this tank. One is a drain, the other is a valve. And we're using a Joby valve. I'll uh, post links to all the stuff that we're using. If you can buy it, I'll post it uh, for Amazon down there. Uh, also using some pretty cool tools today. That Milwaukee heat gun is an instrumental part of this operation. And I'm gonna walk you around right quick and show you, and it'll make more sense in a minute. So let me walk you and show you. So our solar well is way over here. We've trenched around 3,200 feet on this side of the farm, and we're still not done on this side of the farm. I've got an entire water system plan, and I'm gonna post that right here as I'm talking. You guys can see that. That's my water system and my intensive grazing plan. So we'll be moving the cows on a daily or bi-daily basis here on the farm. That's a pretty neat little plan. I drew that up using the GIS website and using Microsoft Paint, I think, is how I did it, but it really came out great. So what we got, we have to bring the Joby valve up into, hopefully I'm saying it right, I think it's Joby. <laughs> I don't think it's Job. Uh, so we go from inch and a quarter poly, we're gonna put a valve here. There'll be a hole down in the ground where I can access that. I'll show you exactly how I make that. And this little section will go from inch and a quarter poly to one inch schedule 40 PVC to our valve. And this is our mega flow uh, float valve. And we'll show you how all that works. This will be stubbed up out of the ground right about there. And this apparatus will be stubbed up out of the ground. This is where it gets different from everybody else's. So Greg Judy and all these other folks are out here building tire water tanks. I've got some different ideas and I think it's important that we have variety in our life. So what I'm gonna do is this end, I've made a gigantic U. It's just basically a U-shaped piece of PVC pipe. This will come up inside the water tank. That is our drain. Water will fall down into that and this will be at a lower point. However, I don't have a hillside dropping off right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a cap on that right there. And then when I need to drain, I'll just hit that and it'll drain it really quick. So really, really cool little setup. Now, I'm gonna do something a little different and it involves a bowling ball. So stick around to the end and let me know what your thoughts are because cows, especially young calves, will get in these tanks sometimes and that's a life-threatening situation. I actually lost a calf in a water tank one time and once you do that once, you will learn, absolutely. So some folks put bars across the top of it, I've got a different plan. So stick around to the end, you'll see that. If you have any questions, please post them down there in the comments section. Tell me what I'm doing wrong because I know you guys like to do that, right? Let's have some fun. Tell me if you think the U will work. I think it'll work and if it doesn't work, we'll fix it. So what we have here, again, and this will be down below the frost line, is a inch and a quarter ball valve. And I'm giving you detail on the things that I think are very important. This inch and a quarter ball valve normally has a handle that's faced downward. We'll get you some footage of making one of these real quick. What I did was design this so that it fits down in what I'm going to make, which is a hand hole. This will go down in the ground and it will have a cap on it. I have already done one of these and it works absolutely Absolutely fantastic and this is just a handhole like you would use for a sprinkler system and this will be up out of the ground about that far it'll have a nice good cap on it so that cows cannot get their feet entrapped in it I'm gonna show you how I make the handhole and it involves a hole saw and a razor knife cool this is gonna sit down in the ground. I don't want my pipe to be right smack on the ground, my valve. I want my valve to be elevated probably about two inches or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill my first hole five rungs up on this corrugated. I'm gonna go exactly on the opposite side, just like so. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my razor knife and I'm gonna cut a slit boy. And then I'm going to replace the blade on my knife. <laughs> 
a little slit there. Now I'm not going right up the center, I'm going off to the side just a little bit. There we go. Now, this valve will be housed inside here. That's how I got the valve inside there, by putting the slit. If I want to go crazy with it, I can zip tie this thing back together right where I'm at. But that allows me to access my valve. This will be down in the ground approximately 20 inches. Now we're going to go install the valve. Oh man, the sun is going down on me guys. Drop that in the dirt, shouldn't have done that. So first thing I'm going to do here, I've got all my tools. I made this little thing right here so I'd never lose my nut driver. Just kind of pops in there. the lid of that. That way I never lose it. It's always with my hose clamps. These are number 20 hose clamps. When I put these on, I'm gonna put one facing this way and I'm gonna put one facing that way. We've got to heat this pipe up in order to accomplish this task. This is a <laughs> tool that I couldn't do this without. So this is a Milwaukee heat gun with a monstrous battery. This is the HD 12.0 battery. Uh, very cool tool. I'll post a link to this critter in the video description down there for you. Slide my barbed fitting right in here. There we go. Tighten these up while it's still warm. And that'll help that barbed fitting grab just a little bit tighter. Next thing we got to do is hook our riser up right here. And I've got that right over here behind me. This is my riser. And that's set up to go from poly to schedule 40 PVC. Now, I've also got to glue this guy together too. I want to make sure everything is in place and uh, properly in place prior to gluing this up. So I've got to make sure also that I'm lined up. In other words, I'm long enough. I want to be away from my uh, valve here far enough to where the cows aren't trampling all over top of it all the time. I'm actually going to use this entire thing and I'm going to bring the trencher back up because I've got a trench oh, a little bit more to run my four inch or my three inch drain pipe. So I'm actually going to put the entire thing on there. Before I do this, make sure my edge is good. Everything's nice and clean. Good. And I'm going to go ahead and slip my two opposite facing hose clamps. Number 20 hose clamps. We'll heat this guy up. I will not tighten the hose clamps yet because I want to make sure that I'm lined up perfectly before I tighten up my hose clamps. All right. We should be good to slide our handhold down in here. So I just installed the riser down there. I'll show you that detail in just a second. I'll slip this guy over, valve in. And we got it. Now, this won't set all the way down in here because I've still got to trench out just a little bit more here. I'm gonna bring this out just a little ways away. So again, that the high traffic area doesn't take a beating right here. So that's it. We'll see you in the morning with the tire tank cleaned and rock dust tamping and doing concrete. Awesome. We are halfway, almost three quarters away done. This is a pretty simple process after we get all the piping done. See you in the morning. Next day, same clothes. <laughs> there ain't no use in changing my clothes to something nice if I'm gonna get dirty. So you guys probably just saw the footage. I did a little extra trenching. So this is the trench for my drain. That's my drain pipe. It's going in in just a second. I've got little T, the little TYM 254. I'll show you something cool in the bucket. And I've got this trench dug out all the way where I need to be. So the next step in this process is gonna be backfilling this trench and I'm just gonna push some dirt off in it. I also have a load of screenings or rock dust right here and this is just basically granite sand okay so it's really really fine <laughs> sand it's getting on the camera lens and what I have on the back of the truck this is also some geo mat that I'm gonna lay out after we get done here inside the bucket here I hauled up enough water to get the job done I've got nine bags of sackcrete right here this is the high strength 80 pound bags of sackcrete now 
I took my tire down and I scrubbed her out real good, make sure it's nice and clean. And guys, this tire has to be clean, okay? I want my animals to have the best water. And we are actually gonna put goldfish in this tank and I've got a little solar bubbler and we'll keep goldfish in this tank to help keep the water clean and clear. A little fish poop never hurt anybody, but also what a great canary in the mine right here telling us about how good our water quality is. Next steps, we're gonna put everything in the ground, get our tamper out, start tamping things down, push some dirt in, then we'll take a little bit of this rock dust, we'll mound it up right here in kind of a circular pattern, and then we'll take the BH100 from Woods and we'll set this right over on top of all these pipes. Then we'll cut the pipe, to the appropriate level and we'll start putting in concrete. We won't be able to put water in until first thing in the morning. So let's get busy. We'll get you guys some awesome time lapse of what's going on. Progress, lots of progress right there. <laughs> my dog on camera. Hopefully I can save the file, but my camera messed up when I was setting the tire, but all I did was pick it up with the Woods BH100 over there and set it in place right here. Um, we're gonna have to get over in the tire and I'm gonna explain all that to you. What I just did was put a layer of rock dust in here and I also put two bags of concrete underneath the rock dust and that's to help seal off the bottom right here. So now we start mixing up our concrete and we're gonna be using Little T, the TYM254 tractor. We're gonna use that bucket as our concrete mixer. The reason I'm doing that is because it's simple, it's easy, it's a good working height and when I get done, I can take it down and rinse it out. What we have to do now is we're gonna take our level, we're gonna go down in here and this is the level I'm gonna mark these. That's where our concrete is going to be. So I'll mark those and I'm gonna cut them off just a little bit lower. So it needs to be low enough to where this sets down in there. Now, the one inch pipe isn't as important. This valve can be in there pretty much anywhere, but the three inch pipe needs to be totally flush right here with the concrete and that's where the concrete will come to. It'll be totally flush with the rim of this tire. And when we slip a little piece of pipe out of here, we can clean this tank out. Basically take a broom in there and sweep it all to the drain. Then it's gonna drain out right over here. You see that guy sticking up out of the ground? Well, it's not gonna stick out of the ground for very long, but we'll get down in here and we'll cut subgrade and then we'll put this cap on. Now, when we get ready to drain the pipe, we can just drop this out, pull, slide a piece of pipe out, and it'll just come right out down here to a lower spot. There is a bowling ball here, and you guys are gonna have to stick around to the end of the video to figure out what the heck I'm gonna do with that bowling ball. Use your imagination, leave me a comment before we get done. So 
So this is the Joby Mega Flow Valve. There will be a tether with a float attached to this valve. This thing kicks butt. This will be attached via this one inch nipple. So this is a slip fitting. It'll slip right on there. And then our Job Mega Flow will screw right in there. I'll post a link to that critter in the video description. These are the best valves you can get. They will work on most any kind of tank. So one of the cool things about this valve is that it has a quick detach, okay? Bam, you can clean it. It has a little screen in there and it's a very easy quick attach. There'll be a full dedicated video to these valves. Now, we've got to cover this hole and we'll start pouring our concrete. And what am I going to use? Flex tape. All right, it's the final countdown. <laughs> so the concrete should have cured. I'm riding Red Yoda up here uh, with the tools and everything that I need. I'm gonna show you guys the type of valve that I'm using just so you understand exactly how this works. And we're actually gonna set the float in this valve. Um, I have the water cistern, the tank is right there. We're gonna roll up here and everything's set. You guys saw me pour some rock around this. That's to stabilize it and eventually I'll build an apron all the way around this thing and potentially put concrete in there. The cows need something to step up on so that we don't make a big mud hole. So we've got our flex tape, <laughs> which is right here. And we'll probably wanna go ahead and remove that. Just take our knife here. And... Are you ready to see what the bowling ball's for? Get ready, cause you're gonna see it. This is my drain tube. My drain tube will be press fit down into here. This is my overflow, okay? We may have to make some adjustments with this. However, here's where we go bowling. So I had an idea, and this idea was simply to take this bowling ball and set it right on the top there as a seal. Now, if a calf were to get over into this water tank, what's gonna happen? Bowling ball is gonna get knocked off, right? Tank is gonna drain. Well, actually, we'll probably take this down to about right here. Tank will drain and therefore the calf will not drown. This is gonna be far enough inside the tank that we don't have to worry about a cow knocking it off inadvertently. And we'll cut this pipe off about right there. This works on a float system. This little float is so where cows can't get a hold of it with their mouth because they'll play with it for sure. What we're gonna do is we'll tie a little knot in here once we get to the level that we want. And there'll also be a knot on this end. So we'll run it through the valve, pull that through. This is what opens and closes our valve. This valve will do 36 gallons a minute at 30 PSI, it is a mega flow valve. We're gonna fill this tank up pretty quickly, guys. Drain plug in place. And I also set this up where I could just pull this back apart. So if this doesn't work, I'll be the first one to tell you. The moment of truth right here, guys. We've got water. <laughs> so over the next few minutes, this thing will fill up, guys. It doesn't look like much flow right now. The well is set to 12 to 13 gallons per minute. That's what's cool about the Laurent Solar Well is that we can set it to however we like. So once again, I'll post links to Laurent Solar and I'll post links to all the stuff that I used here, the Joby Valve. Uh, without the help of those folks and without you guys watching, I wouldn't be able to bring this to you. So thanks a lot. We're gonna put goldfish in, so tune in for a future video. Thanks a lot. Let you guys know also how the bowling ball went. 
I think it's gonna work just fine. If it doesn't work, we'll just extend the pipe and then when we get ready to drain it, we'll slip the pipe out. Cool, see you guys next time on the Stony Ridge. I hope you learned something here. This was a great time and a very educational video. Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! We're gonna show you the drain real quick. And what I'm gonna do is just pop this off and we'll show you how it leaks out over here. We'll pop the cover off here, easily accessed. There we go. There's our drain. <laughs> and yes, the answer is it does work. Awesome. You can drain this whole tank in about three minutes. <laughs>